All right, I'm going to make this very quick and simple because I see these kids are out smoking these vape cigarettes and things I'm hearing about. This is not good. Cancer is an invasive chemistry. And that chemistry invades your membranes primarily. And the membranes become destroyed because the bacteria that is in the membranes becomes destroyed because of antibiotics primarily. However, I decided I'm going to look in to see about cigarettes. Does that destroy bacteria? And absolutely, yes, it does. I went and started to look. Look at this. All right, this is a paper that goes back 20 years. Antimicrobial activity of nicotine against the spectrum of bacteria and fungal pathogens. They think, oh boy, we can use it to kill bacteria and pathogens that are entering your body. Well, maybe it kills some of them, but it's killing some stuff that's in your lungs, I believe, and in other places. They say it's in the mouth, and people get mouth cancer. They get all kinds of cancer from nicotine. Well, what does the nicotine do? It kills the bacteria. That's what I'm saying. The bacteria is in you, in, especially in your mouth, in your throat, and your lungs, to keep out these invasive particles and molecules that are this is a pathway right into you and those are loaded loaded with secretions all right so listen to here it says it's noteworthy that such concentration of nicotine can be found in vivo that means inside especially in the oral cavity smokeless tobacco users making these findings physiologically relevant it should also be noted that the viridance streptococci used in these experiments, now listen to this, which were also highly susceptible to the effects of nicotine, highly susceptible, which were also highly susceptible to the effects of nicotine, are an almost universal inhabitant of the oropharynx. They're killing them, and they're universal inhabitant of your throat and all that whole area. All right, it's killing the bacteria that's found right here in your throat. I think they think it's a good thing that it kills it, but this bacteria is not there as an invader. It's a universal bacteria that is there to attack the other bacteria that's coming. It's a virtual battleground in your body. All right, this is the immune system in action. Now I'm going to show you what happens inside the body, just like it was people talking about protecting themselves and they're hanging around these little guys and all of a sudden they see this big worm come in here this giant worm and they say hey what are you doing man they stop coming in here i do anything i want you see the size of me and i said whoa 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 you don't know you're not coming in here pal and he said what are you going to do about it he said hey, do you know that i have a lot of friends he said yeah let's see your friends he said come on guys let's talk to this guy and show him what we got me and my little friends, man. And they all decide to speak to that guy. And they say, you should have been here. You made a big mistake, my friend. Yeah, he did. <laughs> He's gone. Now, that's your immune system when it's working. Now, here's your immune system when it isn't working. These guys are laying around here, and a worm comes in, and he says, I'm going to do anything I want. And they say, well, please, would you please leave? And he said, no, I'm not leaving. And they said, well, what if we tell you to get out of here, and we all gang up on you? And they said, well, come on, do what you can. And they all gang up on him, but they don't have any, any bombs or tools or knives or guns or anything to fight with him. And he says, you don't have anything. You could jump on me all day long. You're not going to hurt me. And he says, your bacteria is not giving you the tools you need. You don't have any of the transition metals. You don't have any of the things, that the enzymes and all that stuff. Your bacteria is gone. you got no tools, man. So just leave me alone. I'm going to tear this place to shreds. And then you are sick. Now, anybody tells me that life is not... Is is just an accidental a bunch of molecules bumped together and stuff. Look at this. This is this is a, a white blood cell chasing after a bacteria. Now you watch what that thing does. It is not accidentally trying to just get away. That thing is hiding. Watch. Look at him. He's hiding behind him. Zoom. He's running. He's running. He's running. And he's. He's going to get him. He's going to get him. 
Look, he tried to hide right between her. He's running between. He's running. He's running. He's running. He's not going to get. He's get. Case closed. All right. Now, I'm going to tell you something right now. The bacteria that you have in your body make the enzymes to do the jobs that are absolutely required to do things like this. Let's look at what your immune system does under a microscope. Let's see what's happening inside your body. Nobody has even a clue about this. Welcome. Today we're going to take a look at your immune system under the microscope. So what you're seeing on your screen here are a bunch of red blood cells that deliver vital oxygen to our body. The moving cell there is a lymphocyte. That's your immune system. That's what it looks like under the microscope. Now, let me just mention something. Now, I'm going to give credit to these people. You know, I'm not stealing anybody's research or anything. I just want you to understand how this stuff works. All of this stuff, every single cell in here is protected by mucous membranes. The membranes. Everything is. Now, these are white blood cells, and they also have membranes, but they, it, the more important thing is that they have chemistry that allows them to attack. And they need certain chemistry. They can't attack without any bullets. So its job is to go in between all of these cells in your lymph system and start uh, cleaning up, if you will. What you don't see is that it's swimming in water. That's why we need to drink water when we get sick. What you just saw there is a lymphocyte that's changing direction. That's showing intelligence. It's got a signal called chemotaxis to go clean up a mess, and that's what it is right there, cellular debris. So what you're seeing there is that lymphocyte starting to break down and clean up all that cellular debris, just like... All right, how does it do that? How does it do that? I know how it does it. It does it with enzymes. It does it with chemistry. It does it with cooperative molecules that are, I mean, as, as far as I can tell, life extends down so deep that it could be to the atomic level. Seriously. I mean, they, they, they cooperate so elegantly together. Everything is so magnificently orchestrated. I can't, you know, they're way ahead of ant intelligence. And ants are, are, are some of the most intelligent creatures. They work, they, they cooperate. And these do the same thing. You see what's happening there? That is, I mean, it's just, it's just over the top. And what is it using? It's using chemistry. Where's that chemistry coming from? Bacteria says, I need to create these different molecules. I need a little chemistry set. Go down and get this guy to create some bullets so he can go out and suck up all these things. Now, if it doesn't do this, you end up having extra metals in your body, extra uh, whatever it is. The stuff he's supposed to be eating is just not going to go away if he doesn't have the chemistry to do it. If he doesn't have the chemistry to do it, he didn't have a bacteria to create the enzyme to do the job. Like a car that uh, uses gas and there's exhaust, all of our cells use fuel and then there's byproducts and metabolism. This little stick figure, that is streptococcus. That's your immune system taking care of bacteria. Look how it uh, goes and, and uh, protects you by uh, enveloping itself around the bacteria. Now this is a picture of natural cell death. This is apoptosis. This is a cell. Just watch the edges of the cells there. It's about to die. And what a lot of people don't know is that our cells are replaced every so often. Red blood cells uh, every 149 days. Um, other cells may take years, but our cells are replaced with whatever we've been eating at the time. And so it's important to know that these lymphocytes have to go in and clean up all of these cells. Now, I want to mention something else. You mentioned apoptosis. Apoptosis is, is programmed cell death. They literally go to the cell and say, you're not doing too good, I'm sorry, you're going to have to go. And they program it to die, and when it dies, it just dies. Now, if they don't die, that's when you get cancer. That's when you get conditions where you have other problems, where the, the apoptosis does not work. And guess what, what apoptosis is aided by is, is cannabis. Cannabis is a natural apoptosis cancer killer. You read up the research that, that uh, years ago was done, years, many years ago, nothing new. Harvard did it. It cuts tumors in, in um, lung cancers in like three weeks. It cuts them in half or something. Absolutely dramatic. You know, and they say it's a schedule one drug. I'm telling you, it's unbelievable. Anyway, I get on these tangents, but you see what happened here. Watch what happens in the apoptosis again. Right here 
synagogues. Now, apoptosis is very, very seriously important to, to keep you from getting cancer. Now, I don't know if it has anything to do with bacteria or not, but it certainly could. I have no idea. Taking care of bacteria. Look how it uh, goes and, and uh, protects you by uh, enveloping itself around the bacteria. Now, this is a picture of natural cell death. This is apoptosis. This is a cell. Just watch the edges of the watch cells it. there. It's about to die. And what Pull a lot of down. people don't know is that our cells are replaced every so often. Red blood cells uh, every 149 days. Um, other cells may take years, but our cells are replaced with whatever we've been eating at the time. There's one, one thing that is not true, and that's tendons. Once tendons are set up in your body, they are not replaced like the other parts of your body. Tendons are almost inert. They're um, calcium carbonate, CaCO3, primarily. Is it a collagen one? You know, there's, there's it's like 28 different collagens, something like that. Even more now. I don't know. They keep finding them, and they are nothing more than um, building blocks to create different structural things in your body. And uh, one of them is calcium carbonates, and it's a collagen uh, that is is very structural and has a lot of integrity. And those are your tendons. And um, University of Copenhagen did a research project where they tried to figure out why the tendons are so hard to reestablish. Because right now, you just have to sew them back together. They, they do not grow back together well at all. And they found out that the people that were from the 1950s and 60s had still the same amount of high radiation in those tendons only from that test time. And the in indication was that those they, they have not been replaced. The rest of the body was all replaced and had a base ground, you know, C14 today, which is, let's say, one, and everybody else has two or three that's back from that time because it was all in the air. And it's, it was stuck in your body, in every body, part of your body back then, but all the other parts have been replaced except the tendons. So, this is programmed cell death, and there's another issue here, and, and it, you know, it's heavily involved with bacteria. Everything is involved with bacteria. Bacteria creates a lot of the products for your body, and castor oil has the ability to create some products that bacteria create. So that's why it has, and it's a very good hydrator, and you have to have, hydration is water in your system, and that, it sucks water into your system. It doesn't evaporate it out. It's what they call a, uh, oh, it'll come to me, but... Uh, it's, it's got a funny name to it, so nothing you remember easily. <laughs> it's a humicant. Humicant. Like I say, it's not one of those things you hear, they hear that often. No. I'm just going to finish it up with this. This is the whole story right here. If you think you're vaping for your nicotine is not going to hurt you, you are sorely mistaken, my friend, because nicotine has the same problems that antibiotics have. That's what I decided to go look it up, and I found a paper that says, yes, it kills all these things, just like antibiotics, and it kills them right in your larynx and down towards your lungs where you need these these bacteria. I'm almost certain of it, but I could be wrong. I just people get cancer there, so I assume maybe that's it. Now, the membranes coat everything in the body to the cell level and even more down to organelles and uh, all kinds of stuff. The membranes have micro cavities that are filled with bacteria. The bacteria create mucus. The bacteria create mucus coatings on these membranes that protect what's inside from the acids and invaders and bugs and everything else. This is what's going on out there. There's something happening very quick to make some mucus. And it can do it in in a heartbeat, literally. You know that you can you can well up, you can have all kinds of mucus start to form instantaneously. Now, cancer invades weak membranes. It invades them. Those membranes don't have the protective goo and the layers are being invaded, and once it breaks through the membranes, the toxic stuff and the chemistry gets in and invades you. It's just as simple as that. Good bacteria makes enzymes, and it creates mucus to defend you. It says, what's going on? Create some goo, man. There's all kinds of stuff coming down here. And it blah, 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 and that's it. It's done. Case closed. Now, in that goo, then you've got all those other things coming down to attack stuff. Now, antibiotics kill bacteria. 
They kill your good bacteria too. Nicotine kills your bacteria too. It says it in that paper. And that 20 years ago they knew this. So if you think you're va vaping and your cigarettes will still kill you. Case closed on nicotine. It's in my book. It's a, it's a bacteria killer. And bacteria killers are, are cancer causers. Right? Bacteria killers are cancer causers. That's my statement, and I think I'm, I'm very, very factually correct on that. But I could be wrong, so do whatever you want. But I'm not going to be doing them.